Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Rob Neald, KJ7SDJ, and he wants to mount a magnetic loop such as the MFJ1788, which is a remotely tuned uh, antenna, on a block fence block meaning concrete blocks, and there's some rebar in the, the blocks to keep it from cracking and falling over. Okay, he's worried about the rebar affecting the performance of the antenna. Uh, he says, if mounting on the block wall would affect the performance of the loop, and I decide to mount it on my roof, how much space do I need to place between my ceramic block wall and my loop if I mount it horizontally. Okay, love your show and thanks for all the good work. Now if you mount it in its normal vertical position you can set it on top of the block wall without any problem. My personal experience shows that it's about as good as a dipole. Okay, now it is a compromise antenna and the compromise is bandwidth rather than performance. You'll only get a small section of bandwidth. There is a tuner that goes with that antenna that allows you to tune it remotely. And it works. It really does work. Uh, I have one. I've used it um, and tested it quite a long time ago. So if you search my channel for Magloop, you'll eventually find that particular antenna. You can actually set it on the ground if you want to. Uh, you can put it up on the roof. Now, if you want to mount it horizontally, which you can do. It'll have its null pointed straight up and straight down. You're going to want to put it on a post so that you can attach to that the antenna, which will come out this way. It'll only attach kind of at the bottom. It takes a little doing, but then you will have uniform coverage all the way around rather than nulls in the direction through the loop. Okay, uh, if you're going to do it horizontally, get it up higher, as high as you can. Uh, if you're going to do it vertically, the height does not matter so much. Okay, so mag loops are interesting antennas. We recall that uh, you know, the first rule of antennas is that everything affects everything. So wherever you put it, you're going to find if you put it somewhere else, it will behave slightly differently. It's a good loop. It will take you a while to get used to tuning it. But once you tune it, one thing you give up is your waterfall because it's not receiving very much either side of the particular frequency uh, that it's receiving, particularly on uh, 40 meters. Okay, so there you go. I hope, Rob, that answers your question about that antenna. Uh, it's a perfectly legitimate antenna. It's small enough that if you have HOA concerns, you can stick it up in the backyard. I saw somebody who mounted it on about a 10-foot pole with the thing here, hung a birdhouse from it, and wrapped the thing with uh, fake leaves and made it look like a, a birdhouse. And the uh, HOA never noticed and, and did not uh, create a problem. You can pay anything you want for a Magloop. Uh, the ones for portable use that will run up to 20 watts start in the neighborhood of $500. And by the time you go up to super auto-tune uh, stuff like that you and 1,500 watts, um, there's an Italian company that does those. You'll find out that that uh, antenna will cost you close to $2,000. Now that seems a lot to pay for an antenna that fundamentally is no better than a dipole. And you can put a dipole up for next to nothing if you've got uh, the wire. In fact, we just did that um, in... Uh, I just did that in a recent video that's on my ARRL uh, playlist. Okay, so there you go. Have fun with it. And until we next meet, 73. <laughs>